What does the perfect pedal stroke look like in road cycling and what makes it so effective? Can you and should you try and change your pedaling action if it's not optimal? Expert consensus is that trying to change your pedaling action, in the short term at least, is a waste of time. Giving the cyclist cues to improve their pedaling action invariably makes them less efficient and reduces performance. However, ensuring that your bike fit is optimised, and in particular having your saddle at the right height and in the right position, will have a very positive effect on your pedaling technique. In this video, I'm looking at what happens at the ankle while pedaling and why we should be aiming for this. My cycling science textbook says that a study looking at 40 World Tour riders show that their ankles move through a range of 23.5 degrees on average during the pedal stroke. A separate research study titled Joint Motions of the Lower Limb During Ergometer Cycling by Ericsson and others demonstrated 24 degrees of ankle range of motion during pedaling in their subjects. In my own bike fit experience, I took a sample of 50 clients from the last five or six years of fitting and I saw that the average ankle range of motion from that 50 was 18 degrees, the smallest range of motion was 9 and the largest range of motion was 40. Usually what we see is that at the top of the pedal stroke, the ankle is in a few degrees of relative heel down, which is what we call dorsiflexion. And at the bottom of the pedal stroke, we are in approximately 15 degrees of toe point, which we call plantar flexion. However, researcher Wendy Holliday shows that with fatigue and effort, the bias of this position moves towards more relative dorsiflexion. In other words, as you get tired, you tend to have a little more heel drop at the top and a little less toe point at the bottom, even though the actual total range is about the same. So we are looking at a range of ankle movement in the high teens, low 20s. Why is this important? Let's think about what we want to achieve here. More power, more efficiency, less energy expenditure, and greater comfort. When we jump into the air from the ground, the legs perform a powerful action we call triple extension, simultaneously straightening out the hip, the knee, and the ankle. This is an innate and hardwired movement pattern for humans. Pedaling uses this same movement sequence, but in the mid range of each joint. If we ignore the upper body for a moment, the pedaling action requires coordinated force production across the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Clearly the gluteal muscles, which extend the hip, and the quadricep muscles, which extend the knee, are far bigger than the calf muscles, which extend, or plantar flex, at the ankle. So it makes sense that we want the glutes and the quads to do the lion's share of the work. We want them to make the greatest contribution of force production across the greatest range of joint angle. We want these big muscle groups to contract concentrically, which basically means a contraction while shortening to create torque at the crank. The smaller calf muscle is just not large enough or strong enough to work in quite the same way. The calf can, however, contribute quite well to the cycling action with a contraction that is almost isometric. In other words, contraction without shortening or lengthening. In general, isometric muscle contractions are much stronger than concentric, and the slower a muscle contracts, the more force it can produce. So having the calf muscle contract slowly during the pedal cycle, pointing the toes just a little rather than plantar flexing a lot, is the best way to create a force input. Many cycling coaches and bike fitters will say that the closer the ankle remains to a rigid and locked position, the better it is for pedaling, as the muscles that move the ankle are best equipped to transmit power, not to generate power. That is a sensible comment. However, I have never seen an athlete in my bike fit studio with zero degrees of ankle motion. That is not natural and most people couldn't keep their ankles dead still during pedaling even if they wanted to. At 80 RPM, how can you tell if your ankle is moving or if you're keeping it locked in position? I think that having 10 to 15 degrees of ankle motion during pedaling is less than normal but not too great of an issue. Your ankle is nice and stable. However, once you get over 30 degrees, I think you are just not extracting the full potential force production from the calf muscle as it is having to work much faster to get more joint movement in the same period of time, which is a weaker outcome. The calf becomes the weak link in the chain. You are also then underutilizing the much more powerful glutes and quads, which are contributing relatively less. What are your ankle angles? 
To find this out, the simplest method is to set yourself up on your indoor trainer in a well-lit room. Place a strip of masking tape along the edge of your foot, just above the sole of your shoe. If possible, also put a dot of tape on your ankle bone. Now set up your phone camera so it's level with the bottom bracket of your bike a few metres away, but with some magnification on so that you're only seeing from your knee to the floor. Press record on your phone, jump on your bike and start pedalling. Or even better, get someone to press record after you've been pedalling for a few minutes so your recording is more representative of your mid-ride pedaling action. Then use an app such as Angles in Photos to calculate the angle of your ankle both at the top of the pedal stroke and at the bottom. Make sure that the first line you draw goes through the centre of your knee and the centre of your ankle bone and the second line should be parallel to the sole of your shoe. If the difference between the two angles, one taken at the top of the pedal stroke and the other taken at the bottom of the pedal stroke, is a lot less than 18 degrees or a lot more than 24 degrees, then the next question is, what should I do about it? And what can I do about it? If you'd like to know the answer to these two questions, check out the next video in this series, which will be available soon.